Hello friends, in this 10 part video series, I am going to make an online shopping project using Java server side technology with different spring framework modules such as WebMVC, ORM, JDBC, security and Webflow. For database related activity and any transaction, I am going to use Hibernate which will be our ORM tool that will map our object model to the relational table. Okay, now for the front end designing, I am going to use Bootstrap 3 which will make our website responsive and I'm also going to use jQuery data table plugin to display our products as well as little bit of angular JS just to give a kickstart. Now this is going to be our landing page where we are going to display the products. Now this product I am displaying using angular JS. So that's what I want to show you how you can use angular JS and how to set up in your project. Uh, so this is going to be our landing page. Then apart from that, the user can browse through category, the products which are available. So if I click on any of this category, say laptop. So it is displaying all the laptop products which are available with us right now. Okay. Now if I click on this view products, it is going to display all the products. Okay. Or you can also have all products menu here. So that is also you can add if you want. Now this is a data table with a view button and an add to cart button. So if I click on this view button, it will give the entire description for this particular product. So now we have add to cart and continue shopping button available here. So if I click on continue shopping, it will again go to continue shopping. So this is all about a guest view. A guest will be allowed to browse through all the products, but for adding the product, the user has to log in. So say if I click on this add to cart button, it will automatically redirect to login page. This is possible using Spring Security. So let me enter a user credential which I already have. So now I'm logging in with the user detail and you can see we are getting this message that the product has been successfully added inside the cart. So this is how a user cart would be displayed and here you can see we have this cart one item available with the grand total. Okay, now here the user have the option to change the quantity. So as per my business logic for this particular sh shopping website, I'm going to keep like the user cannot add more than three products. So here if I try to add four and if I click on this refresh, it will give me the product count should be minimum at one and maximum three. Okay, and it will stay as it is. So let me add as two quantity and refresh it. So you can see the card has been updated successfully. The total has been increased and here the total is there and also our grand total is this 35,000. Okay. Now I suppose user want to add more products. You can go to view products and suppose you want to buy this product. If you click on this card button, you can see get, we are getting that message. The product has been successfully added inside the card. Here the product has been so a new card line has been added the grand total has been increased and you can see we have two items inside the card with this grand total okay now this is what a user can do so user can check out also but before check out i want to show you one more thing suppose i am now logging as a admin so this was the user part and i'm going to the admin part let me open up uh, another browser and open up an admin window So this is uh, going to be an admin login now. So I'm just going to do an admin login. Based on the credential which the user is going to provide, the role of that particular user will be fetch and the respective menus would be displayed. So you can see for admin, we are getting this managed product. Whereas for our normal user, there is no managed product which is available here. So the admin can manage product. So I'm just going to click on this manage product. Here we are giving an option for the admin to add a new product. And here the admin can also activate or deactivate any of the product. So from our user perspective, as you can see, the product is already added inside the card. So if this user logs out, okay, and suppose logs in once again, so you can see the cart is already there because we are all storing all those details inside the database okay so now the thing that i wanted to show is like suppose this total this unit price the buying price was 
सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ना इफ द एडमिन चेंज द प्राइस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट सो से इफ आई क्लिक हियर ऑन एडिट यू कैन सी द फॉर्म इज गेटिंग फिल्ड एंड हियर इफ आई चेंज इट टू से सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड एंड क्लिक ऑन दिस सेव सो इट इज सेइंग दैट प्रोडक्ट सबमिटेड सक्सेसफुली एंड हियर यू कैन सी द प्राइस हैज बीन चेंज्ड ओके एंड ना इफ द यूजर ट्राइज टू चेक आउट Since the price has been changed, the user can add this product inside the cart for a year, but he is not doing any checkout. So now, if I do a checkout, it will validate my cart. Okay, and after validating the cart, the proper price will be reflected here with the total and the grand total, as you can see here. Now the user can simply check out. So there is going to be a checkout. so here we are going to provide all the address which the user is going to provide while registration okay and after that you can select any of this address so i'm going to select this address so this is going to be the shipping address and here you can see what are the products that the user is trying to buy okay and here we are going to just display our payment details uh this particular you can say a template for card and all those things but i am not going to use any payment service so i am just going to simply click on this pay and an invoice would be generated as you can see it is giving me that your order is confirmed and if you see it will be billed to at this for this particular user at this particular address and shipped to same user at this particular address what is the order date how the payment method is the email address and what are the products which the user has purchased so this invoice would be generated at the end now again user has the option to go to continue shopping and now if you see the card of this particular user it is zero because the product has already been purchased okay and if you go to cart you can see the cart is empty now i am not showing la like how to do order and all those thing because as soon as if you are trying to learn through this particular project so everything once learn you can implement it on your own because everything i am not going to show you but this is how our project is going to look like okay so i hope you will have a wonderful time once you start learning through this project so let me show you the part that i have decided so in the part 1 i am going to show you how to do the project setup and upload it on github in part 2 we are going to build that user interface in part 3 we are we are going to link our front end project that is our the user interface part with our back end project where we are going to do all our database related activity in part 4 we are going to make use of our data table plugin so what the data table plugin is this one so you can search for any product if you want here yeah, so this is through our jquery data table plugin in part 5 we are going to work with admin module in part 6 we are going to do user registration using spring webflow then part 7 authentication and authorization part 8 is going to be our cart module part 9 is going to be our checkout module and part 10 i am just going to give an introduction about angular js and design our landing page so that's the overall summary of what we are going to achieve in this particular project so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching